So we are going to talk about infrastructure as a code. We've already talked about that for Terraform. Now we are going to look into Chef. So it's the same. It's used uh, as a infrastructure, as a code software to deploy Oracle Linux within Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Again, it's not only works with Oracle Cloud, it works with most of the cloud infrastructure. But because we are learning Oracle Cloud infrastructure, that's why I mentioned it here. Infrastructure as a code is a process where data center computing can be provisioned using machine readable definition files. Infrastructure as a code can replace traditional tools and techniques. So it can replace your coding, which you do scripting on a Linux server or using a console, like in the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, or an OEM tool, which is Oracle Enterprise Manager. So it can replace all of them. It can be done as a part of a code. And we've seen the benefits in our Terraform lab. So Chef is similar to Terraform. Only a difference here is it is a company, which which is also the name of the company, Chef, and the tool are both named Chef. And it does the same thing. It helps creating infrastructure as a code. Let's talk about the structure of Chef. Chef node. So a node is any machine, physical, virtual, cloud, network, device, etc. That is under management by Chef. In other words, a physical node is an active device attached to the network that can run Chef client and also allow that Chef client to communicate with the Chef server. So any system which you manage on the cloud is called a node. Workstation. A workstation is a computer running the Chef development kit, Chef DK, that is used to author cookbooks, interact with Chef server, and interact with nodes. So workstation is where your most of your code is created and deployed from. Chef server is kind of a repository where you, or if you have multiple workstation, multiple uh, Chef developers, and they are adding, updating the code that is being synced here in a common repository called Chef server. So whenever you you are trying to deploy new servers or deploy new nodes, manage existing nodes. Software actually is deployed from the server, not from your workstation. So everything you create is stored here, and from here you push it to the nodes. So this way you have a one version of the software which is being deployed, not multiple versions from different workstations. That's a very basic way of looking at Chef. So the Chef server. So Chef Server acts as a hub for configuration data. The Chef Server stores cookbooks, the policies that are applied to the nodes, and metadata. So it also keeps data about the nodes, what's on the node, and so it stores that too. So that's why it knows what to be applied, what needs to be updated, because it is keeping the information of this nodes in the central repository. And metadata that describes each registered node that is being managed by the chef. You will understand more once we do the lab. So what we are going to do in the chef lab. So we are going to start with installing the chef development kit, chef DK. So we are going to download that from uh, the chef website. We are going to select the correct version, then download it and install that software. Then we are going to configure the chef server. So we'll create an account. If you don't have an account with the Chef server, we'll create one account. That account is like creating an organization, which is, you can think of it like an OCI. It was the compartment where you stored all the related resources in one logical place. So organization is similar. That is where you store all your logical which nodes which need to be in uh, one project or one line of business. We will download a starter kit, which helps with the communicating with the server and all the nodes we will manage. In our case, we are just going to create one, but uh, you could have many more. It helps to save the codes, recipe, cookbooks, 
to the server as a central repository. From then, we will uh, use an ex existing code or a cookbook or a recipe. So we'll download one. So there was a market where you could, there people have created different cookbooks which you could actually download and make minor changes, your configuration names, and and use that. And that's what we are going to do. Once that the cookbook is modified as per our requirements, we'll upload it to the central repository, the chef server, from where it can be pushed to the node. We will also create an existing node. We are not going to generate a node from the chef software. We'll create one. We can see how everything connects. Then we'll finally deploy that code which had which we had updated and upload it to the server we are going to apply that software or that configuration to this node we attach to the chef okay we are going to work on a lab so in this lab what we are going to do we are going to create a chef workstation we are going to install the chef packages on that that is going to be a workstation from where you're going to deploy the code we are going to configure a server at this time, we are only going to use a existing server. Basically, the server is in the cloud. So we are not going to build another node like what you see here. And uh, we are going to use this node to install software on it using Chef Workstation and the server. So you can have multiple nodes as we discussed in the presentation. And you could have multiple workstations, but we are going to work with one at, at this stage. So I've already created two instances, which are virtual instances, VM standard 1.1 one, 1 .1 in and the same availability domain. So before I get started, what I need to do is get the packages and download those packages. So I'm going to log into the workstation. So we are logged in. I'm going to become root. So now let's go ahead, go ahead and uh, download the packages. So this is the website where you're going to go to download the packages. In our case, we are using Red Hat Linux 7, 7.5. 7 so the package we need is this one here. So I'm going to copy the URL. So the command is wget and the URL. So it's downloaded. Let me clear that. And this is the, the package. So now in order to install the RPM, what I'm going to do is And this is going to install the RPMs. So it's installing Chef. Now the development kit has been downloaded. So our workstation is ready. Now before we move forward, what we need to do is configure a server. This is going to be a central repository where if you had multiple workstations like the one you see here, multiple users, they would download the the cookbooks, which are actually the code, and would uh, use those. And it would be in one central repository. And that repository also keeps track of all the nodes, all the workstations are managing, and what software is installed. So that's where the server comes in play. So let's go there. So this is what you're going to use to log in there. I already have an account. If you don't, you can click here to get started, fill the details, and you would go into the same uh, home page where I'll go once I log in here. So you, as you see, 
I have multiple organization. If for in your case, you would have a blank page. You would go here and you would create one. In my case, I have already, so I am not. But in your case, you would go here, create, uh, give it a name. So this organization basically is a logical grouping. So you could have multiple organizations. So I could have uh, this one for a lab, this one for a lab for a different project. This could be a line of business. So I'm going to group them accordingly. So I'm going to pick one of them for now. So once you've created, uh, you will go to the organization which you've created and you would say download. So basically you want the starter kit. So in my case, I'm going to click on this. So I'm going to download a starter kit. Starter kit is basically all the files needed to get you started fast. So you don't have to create any of those files and you can build up on that starter kit. So I'm going to say download and you will click pr proceed and I'm going to save it to my desktop. So it's saved. Now from my desktop, I need to move it to my workstation so I can install that starter kit with all the files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a utility called WinSCP. I'm going to put in the public IP for the workstation. It's similar to using PuTTY. Only thing, what it does here, it helps with moving of files. So it's an FTP, secured FTP site. So I'm going to log in here. So as you remember, I have saved here. So I'm going to copy the starter kit to this area. So this is where we already had downloaded the development kit before. So if I were to see if the file's there, it's there. I'm going to unzip this file. And it's unzipped chef repo directory so if i go here i'll see multiple cookbooks which are there roles are there and also read me so it's a so it basically gives you all the files you need to get started so let's clear out of here now there are many options you could create a a cookbook yourself which is the code or you could go to a site, which we are going to, and we are going to download an existing cookbook, which is created by someone else. It does the same thing what I want to do. I want to install an Apache server. So this is already ready-made, and we'll go to the site and download it. And this is the site. It's supermarket dot chef dot io cookbooks and this is what I want to download FB Apache and it basically gives you all the details of what it's going to do and what it's going to produce so you can read through this we'll also look at the default code file so you know what it's going to do once we work with it so these are the files we are going to uh, this is file. There is another file which actually is the base file to that. We are going to download two of those code cookbooks. So let's get started. So the first one is the helpers. So as you see, it's downloading that. And the next one I'm going to do is FP So 
So if I were to look here, I've got those two tar files here already. So what I'm going to do is untar those files. Let me clear. So it created two more directories when I untarred this. So this is a directory structure. If I were to go into FB Apache, there are further more directories. These are the directories. We are going to go into the recipe where the code is. And that's the default code. Now I could modify that code to to the way I want it, but I'm going to keep it the same. So basically what this code does, it's uh, checking which Apache version should be installed on the server. So if you're using Debian, you it'll get that one. If you're using Ubuntu, and if it is uh, the version is 13.10 and more, if and else statement. And for us, it is Red Hat Linux. So it's going to check for that. It should be greater than 7.0. We are at 7.5. And then it's going to configure the directory. For, for Red Hat, it is going to do this. For Debian, it will be something else. So if, so if you had a multiple, uh, nodes, which you are going to ma manage. And if they were in different versions of Linux, you don't have to worry. You can use one software here to work with all of them. And, and this code does that. And it's going to modify the directory the way it wants it to, depending on what uh, flavor of Linux you're using. And it's going to download the packages accordingly. It's going to upgrade. It's going to config uh, root owner. It's going to change the the file uh, privileges. It's going to restart. So it does all that. So I don't want to change it. So I'm going to keep it here for now. But what I'll need to do next is let me clear here. So these are the cookbooks. This is the directory where the cookbooks are stored. Now we have this cookbook. So what I'm going to do is move this to to the cookbooks directory. The reason I'm going to do this is uh, what happens when we configure the, when we configured the server, it knows where the cookbooks are stored. So only issuing one command, it's going to sync the cookbooks which are on my server, my workstation with the one on the server. So any changes which are made, which would be sync to the server. So the next time a next person on a different workstation wants to download that would have the right copy. So that's why I need to move this to the cookbook directory. So let's do this. So they are not there anymore. They are in cookbooks. So these are the two cookbooks. Now, 
just imagine I have made some changes and I need to to push these changes to the server so others can use this cookbook. So I'm going to use this command. So I'm going to say upload. So it's going to upload it to the server. So let's go to our server. So we are going to go to the policy. And if I were to refresh this, this both have been uploaded. So any changes I made, I have uploaded here. So the next user could uh, use this cookbooks. And another thing it helps with, it's when I'm going to manage the node, the code is going to be pushed from here from this server. So that's why you need to upload those. Now we're going to look at our node. So this is one of the node servers we manage. So we now need to install Apache on this server. Just imagine it's not one server, it's multiple servers. But uh, for ease of use, we are just going to use one. I could have multiple servers and do that. But I'm going to connect to this server. And we are going to connect to Putty as we've done in the past. Make sure when you create the instance, you add the SSH files. That's what helps you log in. I'm going to sudo as root. So I'm root. I'm on the node. Now, before we move forward, uh, we need to make sure that our uh, chef workstation can to, can talk to a chef node uh, without prompting for a password. So in order to do that, I'm going to create an SSH key on the works chef workstation. So I'll create an SSH key on the chef workstation. And what I'll do is I'll take the public key of this, whatever we create, and I will copy it to the node. And when I do that, this way, when I try to connect, it's going to do a compare with the private key, which is on the chef workstation, and a public key, which I've copied it on the node, and it will let, let us connect without prompting for a password. And this is we've used in the past. This is going to generate a key, private and a public key, key pair. It's saying this is the default directory. I could change it if I want. I'm not going to. I could have a layer of protection providing a passphrase like a password. I'm not going to. And it's created. So we can go to the directory. So we can go to the directory where the key is created and look at the key. So this is the public key and this is the private key. Now what I need to do is take this key and copy it to the node. For In order to do that, what I'm going to do is as a root, I'm going to copy this key to a temp directory on the, on the server. I'll go to the temp directory where the key is so you can see it. And I'm going to modify the key so anyone can use it. The reason I'm doing this, because I will be logging in to the server to copy this key as a different user. So this gives uh, an option for the other user to copy the key. If it was still owned by root, the other user wouldn't be able to copy it. So again, we are at the win SAP, which we use to copy the starter kit. So I'm going to start out with the 
Chef Workstation. And now what I'm going to do is I've moved, I'm going to copy it to the desktop. I'm going to go to the temp directory. And there's the file. So now what I need to do is take this file and copy it to the node. So what I'll do is I'll create a new session. This time the host name is going to be the node. And this is the public IP for the node. So I'm at my desktop. I'm on the node. This is where the chef node is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the temp directory here. And I'm going to copy it to the temp directory. Again, the reason I'm doing this because temp directory is the directory where any user can write to as far as you have access. So I've copied it here. So I'm going to go to the chef node, if I go to the temp directory, there's the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the root this is the folder where the keys are and this is a file which has all the authorized keys. So you could have multiple, you could have, you know, say 100 workstations, they all have different keys. As far as you copy their public key to this authorized keys, you should be able to log on from any of this workstation without for prompted for the password. So let me copy that public key. And I'm going to name it uh, Workstation. Because that's the key from the Workstation. So I don't overwrite the one. If there was one which was already created at, created here, you you would overwrite that. So make sure you name it different. But in our case, we have not created the SSH keys for this node because we don't need to. We want to push software from the client, uh, from the workstation, sorry. We are going to push software from the workstation. So we need to have that equivalency. So now let me cat this. What this is doing is going to take the key which is the public key for the workstation and add it to the authorized keys. So now to test that, what I'll do is I will go to, I will try to connect here. I will need the IP address for the node. So I'm going from the workstation to the node. and I'm on the node. It didn't ask for a password because it's got my public key. Hope this is simple to understand. Now we made the the connection. So let's go to our folder.
and I'm going to connect to the the node. The node name is Chef Node. Let me put the uh, so what I need to do is get the IP address. So I'm connecting to the Chef Node as a user root root with the name Chef Node. So let's see what happened here. It got the file down, it downloaded the meta file, it did the checksum on the file which was downloaded, it installed the chef, it started the chef, and it's now it's got the chef client running on it. This is on the node. So what we could do is we could, if we wanted to check which all nodes are connected to the workstation, we could say knife node and list list all the nodes. So it's got chef node. If we had multiple nodes, it would list all of them here. So chef node is here. We can also, if we want to verify, we can go back to our server. And if we were to click here, we've added the chef node two minutes ago. So it's become part of the, the server. So the server is going to track what's on this node, what software is installed. So now if I were to come here and do a edit run list. I see the, the recipe we had uploaded before. It's available. So if I want to run it here, I would move it here. And I could have multiple recipes. I could do that. And I'm going to just save this. So it's saved. Now, if I were to go back to the node, actually, if I'm on the node, and now I could type in Chef client. Let me clear. I'm root. I'm going to go now. I'm going to install that Apache here. So this is the command, chef client. So it's getting yum, yum packages for HTTPD, which is your Apache. So what happened here? It upgrade the package HTTPD. It updated the file here. It loaded all the modules. Change the mode of the file, the owner, the group. And we looked at the, the logic which was there in that default file. So that is how it's, it's added here. So if I want to check, what I could do is I could check And the HTTPD daemon is running. Apache is installed on the chef node. And here it's not running because we've not installed Apache here. Now let's go back to that file so 
we can verify what it did. So it checked through all the versions. So if it was Red Hat Linux, it would create a configuration file here, configure it a directory. So let's go back to see if there is anything here. We'll go back to a node. And it's got the configuration file. So it's created everything. Does it have this file? If it was a different flavor, then you would have seen a different directory structure. Does it have this here? HTTPD. So this is what it does. So just imagine you would have thousands of servers of different Linux flavors. You could use this one workstation to install and get all the servers ready with Apache. That's the beauty about infrastructure as a code. I still personally, at this stage, I still prefer Terraform because there is a lot of documentation for Chef uh, with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. I don't see enough, but what I'll do is uh, I'm sure as it uh, picks up more steam, we'll see more more documentations and more cookbooks. Uh, I will try to add more labs once I get my hands on to those. But uh, this is how Chef works.